Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet Demon. So today we are looking at the little portrait that I started and worked on a bit in the color chart uh, and the color chart color theory long tutorial that we did a little while ago. Um, I do have, I did order a mic yesterday, so bear with me. Uh, it's going to take at least a month until it arrives and then I will finally have better sound. So for anybody out there that's annoyed that my sound quality is terrible, it will be changing. I'm quite excited about that. So back to the painting. The painting is really simple. I'm starting with a basic wash and using my color chart, I've gone through and I've selected colors that I feel are perfect for my skin tone. Now, the first thing to talk about is uh, the drawing. I think the drawing is by far the most important thing when you're dealing with a portrait. I've mentioned this before in many tutorials, um, but when it comes to portraits, the drawing is going to make or break it. You can have an amazing color scheme. You can have um, beautiful tones. You can have a great looking skin. You can have uh, where it's all watercolorly, so you, you can see the layers or it's really smooth, um, depending on your style. But if the drawing underneath or if the dimensions are not accurate, um, no matter what, the painting is not going to look like the person you're trying to paint. And that's, that's really important because I think when you are working and you get, you know, halfway through a painting or you get to the end of the painting and you just can't figure out why it didn't work, if you were to take a little more time to draw it really, really accurately in the beginning, even if you decide to do it more abstract later, you still have those accurate uh, dimensions on your page and the eyes are going to look correct. Now, the second thing is that no matter what you paint, if there are eyes on the paper, they're going to be the focus of the page. Um, except for some extreme cases where that might not be the case, but if you're painting a portrait, people are going to be looking at the eyes. So the eyes need to be clear and crisp, and they need to be looking at the same spot. Again, there's exceptions to every rule. Perhaps you're painting someone who, who has a wandering eye or something like that, but we're just going with the standard uh, idea here. Um, you want the pupils to be looking at the same spot. That's really important. The pupils are also going to be round um, when they're when you're looking straight on. Only if you're looking at a person from the side will the shape of the pupil be different. So that's another thing that's very important. The pupils need to be round. And the highlights. The highlights are the most important detail when actually painting a page because that's what's gonna make it come to life. Now this little uh, painting, this little drawing or painting I'm doing here is really, really tiny. It's about three inches in total, uh, maybe three by three when you include the, the poof of the hair. So it's a really tight space to be working with and the eyes are even tinier. They're uh, maybe two millimeters by a little over a centimeter, a centimeter and a smidge. Um, they're really, really tight. So it becomes complicated it becomes difficult to do really fine details in such a tiny space. But that being said, um, it's still really important. Even though those eyes are tiny, they are going to, they're what people look at. That's what people are drawn to. And so I think it's really important to make sure that they're dead on and they're perfect, but also that the highlights are there. It's hard when dealing with such a tiny space that it's hard to put in uh, reflections into the highlights, to put in details, to maybe have the viewer, the painter, the artist, or the photographer looking back at you, or, um, or you know, the scene outside. If it was a larger eye, uh, we could definitely do that. In fact, down on the bottom right, I have two more, and up on the top corner, um, when I do a wide shot, you can see that there's another face in the background. This is the same face three times over so that I can practice. Um, and then there's a nose up here in the top corner. I started the nose, threw on some base colors, walked away, didn't clean it up. It looks terrible. Not important at all. Um, and I'm actually going to scrub it out. I've decided that instead of trying to fix it, I'm going to scrub it out. Because when doing watercolor, if you put down colors and you walk away, it's harder to work with them later than if you were to put them down and immediately get them to do what you want. Or, you know, if you've got it planned, whatever. So for the, uh, for the portrait, the skin tones I ended up going with were yellow ochre and burnt umber, Indian red, and... Uh, burnt Umber. Um, and then the third one was Pazuzio Earth, Burnt Umber, and Indian Red. 
So there were three combinations for the skin tone. Uh, the eyes are a straight blue. I picked out a bluish gray, whatever happened to be on my palette, didn't really matter. The pupils are not black. I never ever use black. So there's, um, there's a mix of blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of red in there. The hair is mostly burnt umber and a little bit of um, raw umber, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. And I think the first wash might have been yellow ochre or Indian yellow. It was pretty bright in the beginning. That was my undertone and I was planning, or as you can tell, um, to paint on top of it. So I wanted that, that under warmth in the hair on the right side, on our right side. Um, whereas on, from what we're looking at, our left side, I wanted that dark, uh, deep shadows because the hair is behind the face. So at this point, I think I'm doing the fourth layer on the eyes and I'm going over it a few times. Now the nose, the nose is an interesting thing here. The nose, the bridge of the nose is really way too dark in this photo, um, in this painting. And that's actually the pencil line that you're looking at. There's pencil lines everywhere. So once I figured it out, I took out my eraser and I erased the whole thing. And then um, it, it comes to life. Now, see, you can see it here. The pencil lines have been removed and I'm putting in a few more details. I'm gonna work on this a few more times. I'm going to uh, play around with it, see what else I can do starting over and working on new paintings of the same subject. Um, and I, I challenge you guys to come and paint with me. I think it would be fun to see how our journeys progress. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett. Toodaloo.